This is a continued discussion on crisis planning, financial crisis planning. Why am I stressing over this the last couple of months? I have the honor and privilege of having access to very wealthy people, number one. Number two, I'm a nerd when it comes to finance, when it comes to economics, the environment, uh, the economic environment. So I am spending more time than your average person does on knowing like what's happening in the marketplace and how does it actually affect your micro economy your personal household like understanding how does a war how does a particular law that changes actually affect your household when do you actually feel it right when does it actually come to you so combine all that together that gives me sort of a crystal ball to really understand what's going on how to prepare based on all of the quote unquote experts, gurus, influencers, high net worth people that I get to you know, share these questions with, these thoughts, these ideas, get insight, and then pass it back to you guys. And then we figure out a way to prepare, operate, and thrive in a crisis. The other thing I've been, I've always hit on for, for years and years now is the word crisis. Many of us look at it as a negative Thing. Now, yes, it could a crisis could be chaos. Like when a natural disaster hits your neighborhood, your town, your city, your state, and there's a state of emergency. People die, people get hurt, um, people lose things. These are all tragic things. If you put on the lens of opportunity in the crisis, you're going to be able to become a solution to a big problem, a current problem that everybody's eyeballs are on, that everyone's paying attention to, and then you can grab market share in your business, at your job, your career, for your family. And that is what truly creates wealthy people. The most amount of wealthy, the most amount of wealth is created in crisis every single time, time and time again, because you have the majority that will run away from their problems, hide, conserve, restrict, fight, and then you have the very few that run toward the problem. That could be a metaphor for the military. That could be a metaphor for a business owner. That could be a metaphor for a first responder. There's these people. These people are leaders, problem solvers. My hope is that everyone in this room becomes problem solvers. The bigger the problem we solve, not only the more money we make, the more impact we're able to deliver, the more fulfillment, joy, peace, name it, go through the whole list, you will accomplish those things. It's a done deal. I'm going to go right to the whiteboard here and then we'll open it up to discussion. I'd like everyone to participate in the comments and I want you to put whether you are an employee or a business owner or both and then put the industry that you're in right what what it is what it is that you do what your business is and if you're an employee what do you do right career job what is it what industry what do you do i would like everybody to participate all 11 people in the room that are here right now like everyone to participate so that i know exactly where everyone is at right now and just know that when the crisis hits you're gonna have the right formulas to move forward with you're gonna have the right resources to tap into and this is something that i have been personally preparing for because my my father in heaven has been preparing me to do these things these are discussions not only am i talking to high net worth wealthy people getting insight and reading and obtaining knowledge from certain news sources, but I'm also getting insight from the almighty, all-knowing Father in heaven, and he's giving me insight on how to operate. And I'm asking him straight up, what does the economy of the United States look like in 2024? You know everything. Why can't my father share that with me, right? Why can't he give me the right insight for me to move forward? He's going to keep me in the dark? Really? Right? I don't know what your relationship is with the Father, but with me, when I talk to my father in heaven, everything is clear. If there's something I'm not supposed to know, guess what? It's not even a thought that comes in my mind. I'm just simply obeying. I'm, I'm a curious obeyer, right? I have obedience, but I'm curious. Lord, no matter what, I'm following you, right? Help me out here. This entire community that you have authorized me to become an influencer, a leader over, aka you guys, and these families of these different age groups in these different states are going through these different things. What tools, what resources, what strategies can I give them right now so that when it hits, they're not going to be blindsided. They're going to be like, oh shoot, Denzel was saying that, dun, 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 and he was saying it in October. 
He said it in November. He said it in December. He said it in January, February, March, and then summer hits and boom, we see a market crash. You get laid off. You get a reduction in clients. Stuff tightens. Prices go up, whatever it may be. And you'd be like, oh, that was, that was supposed to happen. And you're not going to be like the rest of everyone else, continuing to over leverage themselves, risking more money, investing in things they have no idea what they're investing in, right? Hoping and praying for rates of returns hoping and praying that other people are going to make them money while they sleep. Good luck, right? No, I'm going to be the, the leader and I want to develop leaders. Say, hey, everyone in here, we need to be the problem solvers, right? We need to produce solutions for people. And in return, our problems get solved. Our immediate problems get solved. Um, if you're tuning on in, right, we now got 14 people in the house. Please participate by putting in the comments, whether you're an employee, business owner, and what industry you're in, what's your business? So we got military in the house. We have IT, military and business owner. We got healthcare industry. We got teacher, business owner, legal clerk, corporate banking. I know Jerry knows some things. Shipping processor. Cool. Let's see who did not participate. Trusted covenant. I need an answer. Rashid. Boom. IT and business owner. Freddie, I need participation. Sam, I need participation. And I didn't, uh, uh, Dell, whoever Dell is, I need participation. And then DB, finance employee, uh, uh, AC industry. Cool. Cool. Who did not? Vernetta, I need participation. Okay. Government. Cool. Great. So employee, right? Great. Like I always say, you got to know your numbers. No matter, no matter how good you're doing in life or how bad, always need to know your numbers. Now that everyone has pretty much participated and shared what industry they're in, whether they're an employer or business owner, I now want you to comment if you have six months worth of expenses, whether that be in a liquid investment account, a cash value life insurance policy, a money market, a savings account, checking account, or cash, whatever it is. Do you have six months worth of expenses? Put a yes or just put a no. If it is a no, this is your immediate thing you need to work on immediately. What you can do to, to help if there is a crisis that occurs in your life prior to getting the six months, like let's say, okay, I'm finally going to listen to Denzel. I've been following him for four years, two years, but I'm finally going to start listening to him, right? I'm not calling anybody out, but that's really what, that's literally what I deal with, all right? I got clients that follow me for years. They don't listen to me or some do, not all the way. Tell them little things like this. Then when it finally happens, they're like, dang it, I should have did that. I'm like, yes, you should have. And guess what? We're going to do it now. So for those that said, no, this is your primary focus. Primary, got to make this happen. Have that safety net because I am telling you 2024 is going to be a very, weird year. We don't know the politics in our country. We don't know if they're going to orchestrate another lockdown. That's a possibility. Another possibility is we have what's called a reverse market crash. This is something, this is new language to me. I think, I'm like, what is a reverse market crash? I know what a recession is. I know what a depression is. A recession is when you have two negative quarters GDP gross, right? Two negative quarters, you're now in a recession. A depression, I believe is, I want to say it's like way worse than that, but there's also multiple other factors like infrastructure problems and also maybe potentially a war in during a depression, so to speak. Like there's a massive amount of resources being allocated to something and it's affecting the entire nation. Then you have real estate crash. That's when prices drop more than a certain percentage of our home values and then it causes the banks to restrict our credit lines, our HELOCs, our PLOCs, our credit cards, reduce, 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 or they call loans on people and then people go into foreclosure. They now have debts that are underwater, right? So that's say real estate crash. What does that do to the person that was leveraging debt? where they were already in debt and then they were, they had some liquidity, some revolving. Now that gets shut off. Now you're, now you're really screwed, right? <clears throat> but a reverse market crash is interesting. And I've been doing some homework on it, just kind of learning more. So the, the summary of it is, and if you're taking notes, the summary is you've got an environment where we're at 
high interest rates and prices are high as well. So we got high interest rates and prices are high in terms of getting loans, high loan amounts, high rates. And then the government decides to lower interest rates when we're already in a high priced real estate market. So what I was reading was if we suddenly start to drop interest rates, interest rates start to come down, what typically happens to asset prices, stocks, real estate, you name it, typically it goes even higher. So they were do. I had seen an example of someone with a mortgage at 500,000 at 8% versus a mortgage at 650,000 at 5%. And in that example, the mortgage payment is the same. I don't know if this is true or not. It was just something I read in the article, but I get the concept, which is like, do you want a lower rate, but a higher price or lower price, higher rate? I'm currently buying a property in an environment where the price of real estate is high and also the interest rate is high as well. But if we go into a reverse market, interest rates come down and let's say the same property that I'm going to buy, let's say I waited, the the purchase price for it right now is 630,000 for the purchase price of a property I'm looking at right now and that I'm currently under contract for. 630,000. The interest rate, because I'm doing a first lien HELOC, once the intro rate is done, the intro rate is 4.99%. When it's all said and done, it might be around eight and a quarter or something like that when it's all said and done. So 630,000 at say 8% would be the same similar cost to say that same home being at 790,000 or 800,000 at a 5% interest rate. So who's winning? Who's losing? in that sort of a, a, a situation. I, I would assume I, I ought to get the property now, right? In my opinion, I'm like, let me just get it now while I can, while I have the liquidity, while I have the cash, let me build my base, let me make sure I have my foundation, what it is that I'm looking at, and then move forward. And then if there is a reverse crash, then it benefits me because then the price of the real estate would go up. If price, if interest rates don't go down and they stay the same, then I'm thinking we could see a recession where corporations and institutions are just simply not able to keep up with their debt payments, which then what happens to every employee in here? Your jobs are now at risk. If your company, your institution, the corporation, the organization you work for has debt and they have employees, they have a payroll to pay and debt. And if the and if the debt that they are servicing, those rates stay at a high rate and they're not able to refinance anything, who do they have to cut? They have to cut you, the employee. So now you lose your job and therefore that's your crisis. Not the recession, not the real estate you know, crash. Your, your crisis is losing a job, right? So that's like kind of taking a macro situation, applying it to your microeconomic household environment. What are the things that are going most likely happening to employees today, right? The thing that it is, should be on your radar is the possibility of getting laid off, fired, or your pay gets cut, maybe you get a pay cut, or your company closes, which results in you being jobless. So you didn't get fired or laid off, you just, the company closed down, and so there's no work. As a result of that, what, what happens? You now go into more debt if you don't have this, which is why if you're an employee, this is your primary concern and for the business owner as well. Cause the same, so the same thing happens here. If we stay in a high interest rate environment going into 2024 or they increase rates, can you imagine that? Oh my goodness. I think it's already like, it's, I think we should stop. <laughs> but <clears throat> if they increase interest rates and you're a business owner, chances are you also have debt, right? Almost everyone has debt that they're trying to pay off, but then you were making a certain amount of income in your business. And now because the employee got laid off, maybe you're a B to C, which is, you know, business to employee, business to customer. Maybe, maybe you're a B to C business and now you have a reduction in clients. So I, myself, I'm a B to C. I go direct to consumer you guys. So if you guys get fired, you're no longer making money. How on earth are you going to pay me to help you with your finances? So what happens is I immediately get cut because I'm a non-essential um, expense. I'm a non-essential expense. I'm not essential. It's essential to pay your mortgage, your car notes, your debts, your electric bill, right? Food, groceries, the, the priorities. So your business owner in here, guess what? You got a reduction in clients and or cost increase because rates stay where they're at or increase. So now you're not able to refinance debt. You're not really able to move things around as easily. Banks are tightening. Lending restrictions are increasing. 
So it's harder to get debt, therefore costs increase, therefore what happens? You take on more debt. And if you don't have this to weather that storm for that period of time, then boom, that's your problem. Then you either close business and then you go back to an employee to get a job and then your dreams get crushed. For the employee in the room, for those of you that are employees, you get fired, you're now looking for a new job. The chances of you getting another job within six months, when you have six months of expenses saved, the stress is much lower. You're focused on where can I go? What's my strategy, right? Where can I go? So in my opinion, the, the, the strategy, either you're gonna pivot into a new industry, pick up a new skill, or consider sales. Sales is recession proof because there will always be buyers, there will always be sellers in every industry. And you being the middleman, middle woman, to educate the buyer and educate the seller on a transaction, you get the commission for that. So I highly recommend if you're an employee right now and you are not in sales in that company that you work for, I would consider it. What is the sales department or marketing department? That would be my strategy because then I could work at the same location and possibly get paid more money to do the same job, same job that I'm doing. And then if I'm involved in the sales or marketing department, that's potentially more money rather than me having to go do Uber Eats and work my tail off and burn out having two separate jobs. There's there's like an interesting, there's, uh, it. I've, I've heard other content creators speak about this that are in the finance space and they they talk to people that have one job and they figure out how to increase their income at that one location versus the the gig economy where maybe you have that main job and then you are a bartender you wait tables you uber eats grub lyft um amazon driver right at, at night right so you work in the day you work at night you do that four or five times a week the person that does that strategy because you're technically say making more money than the person with the one job long term that person burns out they end up losing both jobs or they lose their main job because they were spending too much time over here and their performance went down over here boom they lose the job now they just got the little side gig now they're in trouble temporary short-term thinking. The, per the employee that keeps their main career position and figures out how to add a new skill within that industry, it's, it's stuff you already know, right? You already know it. So you add a new skill or you pivot in the company to increase your, your value, become more of an asset to that company so you don't get cut. Maybe you end up getting the raise in the crisis, right? Or when you come out of the crisis, right? Either way, that person thinks more long-term, you end up making more money than the person that tries to do this, you know, gig thing, the hustle economy. I never personally bought into the hustle gig economy. I, I never really bought into that. Like whenever I've had clients tell me, oh yeah, you know, I'm doing Uber and Grubhub. And I'm like, yeah, but you just got done telling me that you're in construction. You just got done telling me that you're a nurse. You just got done telling me that you're a waiter, your bartender. Why are you doing that? Oh, well, you know, I make an extra couple $500 on, on the weekend. I'm like, okay, but you're, you have to switch your mind each and every time you go to work for this company and then you go to work for that. And then what is that doing to your marriage? What is that doing to your health? What's getting neglected? Your eating habits, your workout habits, less time with the kids, less time with the wife, like dun, 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 dun. for an extra $500 uh, a month, an extra couple hundred dollars longevity, you're gonna burn out. But if you applied those same hours in developing a new skill that could maybe increase your income by $3,000 a month, but it took eight months to get there. And in those eight months, all you did was restrict on bills and cut back on things and be a little more frugal. I think that to me is a better strategy. Consider that, right? I want you to consider these things as, as we're discussing. So for the employee, boom, need to have this. I'm going to, I'm going to look, we've got, I'm going to look at, so we'll go from the top, uh, high school teacher. Okay. So I got one, no, two, no's, three, no's, four, five, six, seven. I got seven no's. There's 16 people in the house. So some did not participate. I need you to participate. If you have six months worth of expenses saved, put a yes or no. So far I've got one, two, three, four yeses. Do a little tally here. One, two, three, four. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven no's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> Left off at Freddie. Ushani, yes. William, yes. Boom, boom. Did not participate. Need you to participate. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six yeses. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven no's for my no's. 
That's your main focus. Now is not the time to spend your last $500, your last $1,000, $2,000 on a stock, on a network marketing MLM company, on a uh, some guru course. Now is not the time to spend your last $1,000, 500 bucks on that. Me personally, I would preserve cash and look for as many free things as possible. There are so many gurus out there that do things for free. Tap into their free stuff. Take action on the free stuff. Get results from the free stuff. Then reinvest a portion of what you generate into that thing. Till then. Uh, so Freddie, yes, I was able to see your participation. I got you. It, uh, it was, um, I didn't get Trusted Covenant. I didn't get, uh, let's see, hey, Andrew. I didn't get a yes or no from you on whether or not we have savings. Okay, I heard a yes. That must have been from, you know, I'll add another yes here. So from my yeses, all right, cool. Got the six months worth of, of expenses saved. Great. Now, participation again. Those of you that have a debt tool, home equity line of credit, PLOC, business line of credit, or you have a line of credit and a credit card, I want you to put a yes and then or put a no if you do not have a debt tool, okay? But definitely put in the comments as well. Type that in the comments so I can take a little tally. <clears throat> so this is this is good because this you know this is the type of community that we're in so we're all debt friendly here so I'm willing to bet that this number is going to be more on the yes than the no's and I can already tell it's great so Yana Jerry Steve Sam Freddy Rashid we got one two three four five six seven and then eight so debt tool we got eight yeses we got I I put Maya half because he does have a credit card doesn't have a line of credit though we'll put you on the half Vernetta, william no no ushani no so three no's for my nose and my nose first six months build that up simultaneously you could be building a relationship with a bank to eventually get the debt tool p lock he lock right or business line of credit and then once you get the main debt tool then try to get a credit card at zero percent on purchases and balance transfers this is for the purpose of buying time if I burn through the six months, same goes for those that are my yeses. Yes, we have six months of expenses and yes, we have a debt tool. Great, right? But if you were a yes, no, like let's say, um, let me see if there was any yes, no's. Dell is a yes, but then, oh yeah, Dell, Dell was a yes, yes. Don't think there was any yes, no's. Oh, Vernetta is, okay, that's a, okay, so Vernetta is a yes, no. So if you are a yes six months, but no debt tool, that's your focus. Get the debt tool. You're gonna be way better off financially if you obtain a personal line of credit, a home equity line of credit in the midst of a crisis and just have it there. I'm not even saying to use it, right? It may not even make sense to do velocity banking in a type of a crisis but we can, do, we can use velocity banking to simply buy time. The average person that goes into a crisis and then they burn through their savings, let's say they were doing the Dave Ramsey uh, seven, seven baby step plan, okay, they get in a financial crisis, they have no knowledge and wisdom of using debt, now they're faced with a problem, a, a moral issue here. I'm not supposed to use debt, but I don't have any savings, I need money. And then they make a, a rash decision without any education and they go get a prosper loan lending tree 16 15 percent payday loan am scott um what's that other one that's around all the the ghetto corner stores the western union right you walk in there give you a loan these you know usury rates or they borrow from their credit cards they take out a personal loan and they just get hammered for my yes no's yes to six months worth of expenses no debt tool that's your focus build a relationship with a bank let's get the debt tool heloc p lock and a credit card as well. It, it's nice to just have a credit card there off to the side, 0% on purchases for at least 12 months, 0% on purchases and balance transfers. Boom, little maybe seven, maybe 10, 15K credit card. Bam. Don't even need to use it, right? We don't need to use it. Then I have my main debt tool, P lock or HELOC. Don't even need to use it. Let's not do the kitchen right now. Let's not remodel the bathroom. Let's deal with what it is. Let's not put the pool in place just yet. Let's wait. Hold on, hold on to it because I, I can assure you it's gonna get very, very weird in 2024. It's an election year. We go from Democrat, Democrat to Republican, it's gonna get weird. We go from Democrat to Democrat, it's gonna be weird. Like it's just, it's gonna be a chaos, right? Usually how it is. Stuff's gonna get weird. Why is that? Well, the people at the top with all the money are either what? 
Republicans or Democrats. So you've got the investors that want a Republican in, they're probably gonna be more conservative or they might be aggressive. They're like, oh no, we're, go we're going back Republican. It's gonna swing back for sure, no doubt, it's gonna swing back. Then if you got your high net worth Democrats that are aggressive, all in, we gotta keep, keep the administration democratic. Then you have to understand that this goes multiple layers in terms of the different favors that are happening behind the scenes for certain companies. Because now we live in we live in that kind of an environment now where it used to be politics over there and business over here. It's not like that anymore. Now you've got CEOs, VPs of companies bringing their politics into the business. So what does that do to the customer? Well, if you and I, let's say we got Democrats in here and we got Republicans, and you find out Bud Light did this with the Dylan Mulvaney stuff, and you've been drinking Bud Light your whole life, and then you see that, what they did, right? With that little whole stunt, what do you do? You stop buying Bud Light. You take your business and you go to Modelo, right? You take your business and you go somewhere else. Okay. Like that's, that's the economics with how the politics are now merging more than ever before, and you can literally see companies lose billions of dollars, right? So we saw that happen with Bud Light. What happens behind the scenes for the people who work at Bud Light? Think about that. At the top, it was this whole stunt, Dylan Mulvaney, right? They did the commercial and you saw the, the backlash. So many customers said, I'm never touching a Bud Light ever again in my life, right? top news. Well, what if you were an employee at Bud Light? You didn't make the decision to hire Dylan Mulvaney to, you know, to appeal to a, a one percentage of the population, less than 1%, but you're a driver for Bud Light. Now you get cut. Marketing team gets cut. Whoever was under the VP of that lady, she got cut. How many other people got cut? Lost their jobs. Think about that. We're talking billions of dollars lost within a company and market share. That's going to take years to recover. Think about the employees that, that were like, Oh no, I'm done. I'm leaving. Well, now you lost. Now you left. Now you gotta find a new job. Where are you gonna go, right? So this is happening. So now, as an employee, you gotta be mindful of this. Who's my CEO? Are they Republican or Democrat? How can I find that out? What conversations could I be having with the managers and the bosses? Who's doing what, right? Like I would literally, if I was an employee today, I would find out who my CEO is, go to their LinkedIn page, find out their social media, and see what kind of information they're posting, right? And typically, you know, nowadays it's, you, you can give it away. It's kind of easy to determine who, who falls where. So if your CEO takes photos of him hunting exotic animals, taking pictures next to him, I can guarantee you he's probably not democratic, right? So you say, oh, boom, all right. He probably leans more center, center, right. Versus if your CEO defines him or herself as a, as a she, her, or he, him on their social media, and that's their pronouns, you probably take a guess. They're probably more left, probably more, you know, Democrat or far left, probably put that together, two and two. That's what I would be doing. And, and, and this doesn't mean I need to uh, uh, compromise my values and principles. I'm just going to have that awareness. Say, okay, cool. You do that. Gotcha. All right. I don't have to agree with you to work with you, right? But I'm just keeping that in mind. Say, okay, if they're swinging that way and then they decide to take the company and go woke, we've seen the case studies. It doesn't work. Bud Light suffered, doesn't work. There's a company called WeWork. Anybody know WeWork? This was like a phenomenal idea, right? Like I went to a couple of WeWork workshops in, in Miami. It was all about co-working, co-working spaces in like prominent areas, you do business, you network, you do all these different things. That company was valued at like 40 something billion dollars, they're going bankrupt right now because they decided to go woke, right? So there's the case studies that we can see. Well, what if you were an employee at WeWork, right? They go work, they go woke, boom. They get these values, bam, the uh, revenue precipitates, goes away. People are like, uh-uh, we're not doing that. Market responds. Same thing with schools, education. There's teachers in here. Same thing in the military world happens. A lot of things going on in there. Same thing in the healthcare space. There, You guys are in the healthcare. You guys are protesting right now, right? If I'm not mistaken. I think it was the largest, not protest, the largest like union within that space. Um, you know, the walkouts, all kinds of things. Someone in the healthcare space, whoever said they were in healthcare, you can put a comment, speak to that, right? Were you a part of that or that didn't even affect you? because I know it has to do with unions. These are things you wanna pay attention to as an employee. Am I in a conservative, more center, center-right company? Then the only thing you have to worry about um, 
is is how far you know right leaning that CEO is and what kind of things they might say that could that could take market share from the company and cause you to be cut right from it. You, you, this is what I would do if I was an employee. I would just be mindful of who my superiors are, how I can become assets to them, become more valuable, pick up a new skill, increase my pay. And then as I get higher and higher in the company, build these skills, then I can really start you know, looking, especially if I don't agree with the morals and principles and values of the CEO, and maybe it's just a stepping stone. And that's an opportunity for you to pivot. These are all things that we can be thinking of in crisis. So that's very, very important stuff to consider. Um, so, to, so to recap, this is your biggest micro economic thing that can occur in a macro crisis environment is with politics and then we got potential wars going on in the world different things like that how does it actually affect you in the form of a layoff fire cut and pay your company closes you take on more debt because you no longer have income coming in and then it spirals into a bad situation get your six months worth of expenses once you have that get your debt tool you got that cool we got yes yeses we have yes no's and then we got no no's, no and no. Once you get those things in place, got the debt tool, we got the six months worth of expenses. I would consider sales to increase our income. I would consider pivoting if it makes sense. If you're working in an environment where you're like, God did not call me here, you really need to start planning. We need to start planning together. Let's jump on a call, let's plan this out. Where are we gonna go? Here's the mindset I would like you to adopt in crisis. There's a macro crisis, but when a macro crisis occurs, it might not even affect you. So, but here's the thing, we don't wanna be loose because then it could eventually get you, it could blind spot you, right? So the mindset I want you to adopt, crisis equals opportunity. I want you to logically be conservative, be mindful that desperation will kick in. I don't want you to make a illogical, uneducated financial decision because you got sold by some guru and then it ends up being a scam. I've had clients get scammed already, it's annoying. And I'm like, wait a minute, you've been watching me for four years before you spent a the dollar. Then you go find this guru and then within two months because they're talking about how to make money and I don't talk about how to make money all the time, but they talked about how to make money with you and invest in this uh, freaking crypto company or, or this stock company and they took your damn money. But, you, but, but, but when it came to me, you took four years? What, what? I'm lost, right? That's frustrating. I don't like when that happens, guys. It's like you spent all this time getting to know me before even paying a dollar. I put all that work in, right? Then you finally become a client. You only spent a couple grand to work with me, not even couple hundred dollars, couple grand. I save you tens of thousands of dollars through strategy. We input discipline. And then three months you get sold by some guru and you spend 50 grand, 25 grand, 10 grand, 30 grand. And, and then you're coming back to me and I'm like supposed to do magic. What are we doing? I know what happens. You get desperate. That's what it is. You, Cause before, right? We were, we're building, we're building, we're building. And then we put money in your pocket. We recover cash flow. We reduce interest rates. We get you access to, we get you access to debt and capital. And then we abandon our principles and we go chase the money. Why do we chase money? Majority of the people in this room claim to be of the father, claim to be of the one, the way, the truth, the life, the everything. Yet we don't even consult him when we make an investment. That is frustrating. So, we, so we're not consulting with our Father in heaven. For those of you who are in the room that are of the faith, we don't consult with the Father when it comes to a financial decision, but when it comes to your health, this one got cancer, this one got in a car crash, pray for me, God, da, da, da. What about the money? What about the money? Frustrating, guys. Can't stand it. Hurts my heart. Really does. I'm cool when we're on the phone together, but let me tell you, I get off the phone, I start going to work, case studies, I'm like, damn people. You know, listen, let's not be that next person that didn't do their due diligence, that didn't check out that guru, right? Let's not be that guy or gal. Please, 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 let's do our due diligence. As much due diligence as you did on me, do it on them. No matter how smart, no matter how many subscribers they have, no matter how wealthy they are, I don't care. Do the homework, right? Do the, dil the due diligence, be logically conservative, crisis equals opportunity, in regards to our mindset, so logically I want you to be conservative, spend less than what you make, consider being frugal, minimalist, right? Let's you know look at the waste management. But spiritually, I want you to think big or mindset. We can say mindset or spiritual. I want you to think really big. Who can I serve? How can I go from making 70,000 a year to 700,000 a year? How do I 10X, right? Think really big there. My business owners in the room, we get a reduction in clients, costs increase. 
we burn through six months of expenses, we then tap into our debt tool, we still don't recover, right? In that time frame, and even now, I would say pick up a new skill in the business that you're in. Become a solution to another problem that's currently happening with other businesses or your customers so that they're forced to come to you and give you business. Here's my strategy that I'm implementing going into 2024, because I know it's already gonna happen, is I'm gonna develop within Finance Geek Ministry and out of it. So Finance Geek Ministry is free all the time, no matter what, okay? I serve people for free, I coach people for free. You just gotta be willing to do the work, put in the time, show up to the meetings, right? <clears throat> and then I, I pour into you here live, answer questions, do case studies, and then those that do the extra work and actually filling out your numbers and going through my steps of exchanging social currency, you get coaching from me for free. But in my, on the business side, everybody, you know, pays, but now I'm working on a help now, pay later. So basically I get anyone in a negative cash flow situation, low cash flow, or maybe they're not doing the best. And they just don't have the, the, the resources to, you know, invest in coaching and support. I'm going to set up a whole help now, pay later, and then I'm going to do a whole pay what you can model. Um, so that's going to be for my own personal business in my consulting and coaching practice. That's what I'm going to be implementing. I'm going to negotiate more in crisis. That's where you get deals. That's just generally speaking over the business, you know, working with folks, trying to obtain things, negotiate, increase skills. I'm working on my speaking skills. I'm working on increasing content that addresses current events. My, my goal is to get louder in 2024. Louder with purpose though, not just loud to be loud, not just loud to get clicks and likes and views, but getting loud with a purpose, increasing the, the projection of my intention to help someone receive a result, right, in their finances. That's my strategy. Want to open it up to some, some Q&A, see what you guys are thinking, what's going through your mind, what are you working on, what's your, what's your next two, three moves moving forward as we get ready to close 2023 out. As of right now, is there anyone in the room that has already been laid off, not working? So we have 17 people in the house. Is there anyone currently out of a job, not currently working? Put that in the comments. Steve, like, no, right? Like, no, like you're, you have a job? William, okay, okay, cool. Wife has lost her job. William says lost a huge contract. So that's on the business side. That's a big revenue, say, you know, reduction. Clients are reduction in revenue, potential revenue, right? Working, cool. <clears throat> so for the most part, everyone is working in here, which is good. I am working with people that did lose their job, did lose their position. Um, is anyone right now looking at pivoting into a different industry or starting a business? I want you to, I want you to participate, comment if you are considering pivoting from one career, one industry into another, or one position into another, or if you're currently a business owner, or you have a desire to start a business, what are you, what are you looking at? All right, so Al says, building back from pandemics, so we're still recovering, right? Three years ago, but you know, you could say like COVID lasted like a good year and a half, two years. So you're still building back, have a small business. What is that small business? Rashid says, wife has pivoted into business. What's the business? William, current, current business owner looking to diversify. Maya says, yes, looking to move into IT. And then Dell says desire to do online sales. Cool, what kind of online sales? Let's take a look at this stuff. Let's see what what kind of, uh, what, could, what could we map out here? How could we strategize this? Right, so I'm gonna erase this part here. So we know coming out of this meeting, from my no's, no's, and my yes, no's, or my no yeses, gotta have your six months, gotta have the debt tool, spend less than what we make, right? Let's be a little, let's be even more mindful of our waste management are we subscribed to four different platforms let's cut two of them right are we eating out five times a week let's cut it down to three to two to one let's just really try to let's try to be cash liquid right now because when the crisis hits it's an opportunity if you have the cash oh my goodness the type of deals that you will get on sale it's crazy so uh i want to open a small retirement home with nine retirees cool dell said online full-time ceo financial literacy content creator i like it so we got we got online sales what's the benefit of that remote work right so you're able to spend less time potentially make more money less work more money most likely commission-based right maybe some kind of a 
base pay. All right, then we have content creator. I literally believe that everyone in the 21st century should have content. You should do it for your family to pass a legacy. You should do it to display and write down the morals, principles, and values of your household. Get it on video. Not e I'm not even talking about posting it anywhere yet. I'm just getting you to really consider doing what I do because there's a lot of financial people like me that are not on the internet and they have to work double the amount to get one client because they don't have a social media presence. This work that I do, there are so many videos, there's so many phone calls that never got recorded. So I'm the, I'm the same guy off camera, on camera, same person. I'm doing the same amount of work when I'm, work, when I'm working with a one-on-one -on -one client, when I'm on the call with a client one-to-one, -one, or if I'm doing a whiteboard session with someone, it's the same amount of work. I might as well hit the dang record button and pull content out of it. This is something that I'm working on for myself going into 2024. I plan on literally documenting so many of my phone calls and then I'm gonna post snippets of it on YouTube. That's gonna be a game changer where people can hear the person's voice, me talking to them, certain issue, and it's only gonna be like say, you know, five minutes, seven minutes, three minutes, two minutes, little shorts, pumping content, pumping, 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 and all I need to do is have a camera at my desk, right? Because this is my studio setup right now, but I need to create another studio setup at my desk with the two, two computers, basically. One computer that can capture the, the camera and the audio, whatnot, and then my other computer where I'm doing the work, my notebook, and maybe have two camera shots, and they're both just recording for like eight hours a day, six hours a day, and I'm gonna do nothing but continue to do the work that I'm already doing. This is gonna be a game changer for me personally, and it's going to exponentially increase market share and attention. Watch, 2024, you're gonna start seeing it. You're gonna start seeing content. Oh my God, this guy never always posts every day. Oh my God. But watch what that does in terms of attention, market share, even in the midst of a crisis, and then I'm gonna have this whole help now, pay later, pay what you can thing going on, and you're just gonna see the you're going to, you're going to see what kingdom serving looks like at scale in regards to content creation. Like what I've been doing now is nothing compared to what's coming the next five, 10 years. Whether you're a nurse and you work in the, in the workplace, I, I see nurses on social media. They find the time to create content, whether they're educational or whether they're being funny or entertaining, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, we need to document what it is that you're doing and how you do it well. So, for uh, DB, this one's you know pretty interesting um, and simple. Financial literacy, that's education. You can mix that with entertainment, create content, literally copy everything that I'm doing, and you will literally be the next Christy Van, right? Who's literally doing more volume than me right now, has, I think, 150,000 subscribers at this point in less than a year, okay? No joke, you could be the next Christy Van, you could be the next Denzel, you could be the next, any name, any guru in the finance space, you could be the next one, right? Here's what I love about being a content creator. No competition, there really isn't. Why is there no competition? I just, I just proved it. Christy Van talks about the same exact stuff that I talk about, and she found 145, 150,000 people, 147,000, DB just corrected me, as of December 1st of 2023. 147,000 subscribers. Where, where did those people come from? Where did they come from? Uh, sure, some came from my channel, sure. But we're talking, look, 148,000 subscribers, 461 videos in less than a year, right? I'm on our channel right now, 148,000 subscribers. Guys, I guarantee you the majority of that 148, they don't even know me. They just know her. And then I guarantee you, a majority of my 50,000 don't know her. There's no competition. That's the wonderful thing about being a content creator. It's just you competing against you. Christy Van is competing against Christy Van. Denzel is competing against Denzel. You know what's even cooler? You make a relationship with a Christy Van, with a Denzel, and they put you on their platform. That's attention. That's more viewers, more eyeballs coming to you. And that's what we do as content creators. Majority of us help each other out tremendously. Because again, there's no competition. Income potential is uh, also infinite, which is like crazy, right? So that's huge. Who else is doing what? Uh, so Rashid, we got a, a weight loss. Who doesn't want to lose weight? My goodness. There's so much content out there, right? So weight loss, high demand, 
That's the benefit there. I bet you, you will outperform 90% of weight loss coaches by creating content and doing online sales. You, you will outperform the masses because you decided to put yourself out there, go online, help people, show the results. The stuff is in high demand already, right? So whichever angle you take in the weight loss industry, whether it's like you're pushing product, pushing a course, pushing nutrition, health, blood work, whatever it is, meal prepping. There's so many affiliate and referral setups that you can create within that to build your offers and build your different funnels to create the streams of incomes to come to you. This, this right here, the creating content part, no matter what industry you're in, really is the differentiator in the 21st century. It really, it really is, right? And, and what's, what's even crazier is technically speaking, when you compare a content creator to a, to TV, right? So TV is considered, television is, that's considered where the professionals are, right? The talking heads, the anchors, the actors and actresses, that's, that's professional. When you step in this world, content creator, it's all amateurs, but it's not really amateurs. It's just because that's what the norm is. That's what society says. These people are gurus, sneaky snails, sneaky, sneaky snake oil salesmen, right? Scammers. And yes, there are those in both. You got evil in both, but understand that it is so much easier to penetrate the content creator economy than it is to go become, go on TV and become a personality and actor, actress, become a professional on TV. Way harder. That's like trying to become a, a professional athlete. Right? You got a one in a million chance. Content creator, there, there is no one in a million. It's, it's one for one. You go in, boom, you're a content creator. The moment you post your first video, boom, you're a content creator. There's no certifications needed. There's no licensing needed. There's no pre-qualification needed. You just go, you just go. Now, obviously we can put a strategy behind it, right? And all that stuff, you just roll with it. So weight loss, nice advantage there is in high demand. People want it. People always want to lose weight. That's huge. Uh, let's see who, so we got converting from commercial to government contracting in freight and logistics. Yes. Now that is where money really is. So we got a, so we got a pivot move within the community here so going going from commercial to government contracts game changer freight and logistics now you got to know some things right you got to know you got to know a little thing or two about logistics right and how this works but if he's pulling knowledge from one location and becoming a freelancer becoming a government contractor getting the proper documentation getting the right certifications right Small business enterprise certification and MBE, SBE, and, and all this different certifications needed. A lot of money. Get Here's the advantage to this government contract. Advantage, government is the largest customer of everything. The government buys more things than everyone. Imagine, imagine the government being your customer. Are you going out of business? You only go out of business if the government goes out of business. If the government goes out of business, buddy, we have a different problem. You need guns and ammo at that point. Guns and ammo, maybe some gold. And so we could spend a little time discussing that. I think I personally would yield. I'm not really the person to discuss apocalyptic planning or war planning, wartime planning, but it doesn't hurt, I guess depending on what state you're in, it don't hurt to own a gun and some ammo and some food supply and some non-perishables, right? But personally, I would get my six months worth of expenses saved up and I would have my debt tools and have, have a good idea of my numbers, right? And then once I got that down, then in terms of protecting the, the home base, me personally, I need a couple guns. I need good ammo. I need my non-perishables. I need my flashlights. I need my tools, right? I need to know, I need to know certain skills in case things really take off, have that protection. So I really won't spend too much time on that because again, I'm not that educated. There's, you know, there's, um, Here's a cool thing about the whole content creator world. There are some really cool Navy SEAL channels, ex-Marines, ex-SEALs that became content creators, the toughest guys in the world, Navy SEALs and Marines that are now retired, sitting in podcasts and talking about how they you know, took out Osama and went to Afghanistan and war. And they're talking about their mindset and what type of guns they have and training, gun training, mindset training, self-defense training. 
I'm like, these guys are freaking awesome, right? Like, thank God for them to think of the idea of becoming a content creator, want to serve the, the citizens and how they can become a militia and protect themselves in case tyranny comes at our doorstep, right? And how to prevent that. So that's huge, huge stuff. Al says 40 years in the business. Look at that, 40 years in the business. I convert that knowledge, go into government contracts. I should be able to, I should be able to get things going fairly quickly. The, the, I think the only tough part is the paperwork, right? Getting all the certifications and, and whatnot. But once you're in, you're in. Because this is the type of work that a lot of people don't want to do. This is hard work, right? Being a content creator is a lot easier than working with the government. Starting a weight loss company, a lot easier than working with the government. Doing online sales, a lot easier than working with the government. But you start landing 10, 20, 50, 100 million dollar contracts, you outperform all these guys. And if you adopt this in the process of doing it by just simply documentation, just document it, because that's, that's how you find your successor to take over your operation. You create content, you find a hardworking person like myself that's watching you online. Like, you know, I want to be like Al, man. I want to learn what he learns. I want to mentor under him. And you get a fired up young individual like myself to come work in your company and be your VP or your marketing person, your operator. What? Game over. Okay, Freddie says real estate investor. Steve, pivot to an intermediate resource to provide a substitute residential environment to people referred by a health and social services facility. Interesting. What industry is that? An intermediate resource to provide a substitute residential environment to provide a substitute residential environment. So, so living to people referred by health and social services. So like kids, maybe kids, people that um, abuse, abandonment, orphanage, thinking. Sounds like nonprofit work, philanthropy work. Definitely an industry there that solves a huge need. Vernita, get online Avon business going. Where, where have I heard of Avon? Have I heard of that? Um, I've heard that name before. Let's look it up real quick. So I know what industry that is. What is Avon? Shop the best, ma okay, makeup industry yep that's what that is i think that's a I think that's a network marketing so what's the advantage with that right so avon you want to get ahead of 90 percent of avon reps start creating content Here, here's what's interesting so avon right so network marketing direct sales multi-level right that's that that's that world avon it's in the industry or we could we could call it beauty industry right it's in that world and the benefit here low cost startup i don't have to so i'm basically buying a franchise at low cost i don't make the product i just sell it push it right market it here's what's interesting i don't think a whole lot of network marketing people consider ever and this is what i would do so i'm gonna share my screen here check this out i'm on i'm on the avon site right who's that girl and who's that girl and who's that lady right there site froze on me the point i was making is within the avon industry whoever runs that if i was to create content get enough eyeballs could i potentially be one of their images that they use like could, could they use me to to promote their brand and pay me the money that's something to consider second thing most avon reps don't create content going for zero so no startup earn 25 percent commission 40 beauty order unlock discounts perks all right so you got all these different benefits okay so 20 25 selling products online this this type of world what they tell their people to do you make it easy and fun to sell avon as you go with your own mentor blah, 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 right social selling training team free online what what, what they teach their reps is like outdated, outdated. Most network marketing companies, when it comes to how they teach their people to market, totally outdated. They're like, have a party at my house, right? You bring your friends and family over. That's like the worst, in my opinion, worst strategy. You want to get ahead of 80, 90% of those Avon reps, go create content. Have a little, create a little setup in, in your home and be like QVC. Pick this product up and show this and show that and do this and then do the makeup do the makeup go to the bathroom get the get the ring light right nice and do it do it every day because you're already doing it every day as a woman you already do your makeup every day you already have a makeup routine every day and you have a night routine every day and you have a day routine every day that's four opportunities to create content in your bathroom create a setup have it set up each time you just boom, hit record, hit record, hit record, and you and you educate on all different products. That's another thing that most of these Avon reps probably not doing. They have no idea what the hell they're selling, 
right? So you can get very educated on what the product is, what it actually has in it, what makes it do what as you're doing it. You can be an educated beauty insider, whatever you want to call yourself. Click the link below, buy these products now, change your beauty, transform how you feel, and then you pivot it talk mindset. Hey, when you transform the way you look and feel, what do you think that's going to do to your income, ladies and gentlemen? What do you think that's going to do to your performance at work, ladies and gentlemen? And now you become motivational speaker, mindset person, beauty. Now you got all these different things going and you're in the amateur space, the content creator space. And then maybe it takes off, maybe it doesn't, but I would argue much higher chance than what they're telling you to do with the marketing, starting with friends and family. It's like the worst thing ever. That's my uh, two cents there. That's the huge opportunity within the network marketing, MLM, direct sales space. Become a content creator, educate, do it over and over and over and over and over again. And it, it hurts less when strangers say no than when family and friends tell you no. It hurts way less, trust me. Especially if you're new to sales. Anyone in here, if you're new to sales, trust me, it hurts way less when you get a no from a stranger because that stranger don't know where you live, that stranger don't know how you look, how you dress, you know, what bedroom you sleep in. They don't know your personal things about you. They, they haven't been living with you. It's literally a five minute conversation, 10 minute conversation. No, I'm not interested. Okay, have a nice day. How much easier than your parents, brothers, sisters, cousins, people that know you, friends that know you and they tell you no. Sucks, really sucks. So like a sponsorship with Avon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine getting sponsored by the company that you promote. I, I bet that can happen, yeah. DB, having guns, water filtration system, non-perishables, ammo, prepping, location for the homes, for the tribulation, for the safety of oneself and your family. Yeah, and hey, even if even if rapture don't come for the next 40 years, don't hurt to have a gun. Don't hurt to have some ammo. Doesn't hurt to have some food, some non-perishables, ways of self. Doesn't hurt. Let's take to the Bible. What happened to Abraham, Abram's nephew, I think it was? Anybody remember that story? What what happened to Abraham and his nephew, I believe. Anyone tell me in the comments what happened to Abraham's nephew in the Bible? This is in scripture. Yes, I think it was Lot. He was kidnapped, right? By the enemy. And then what happened? Abraham had what is known in that time as a as a, a war chest. So in today's time, if Abraham, Abraham was with us today and his nephew got kidnapped, Abram would have guns and ammo and he'd have an army of people. So Abram and his army went to rescue his nephew. So Abram had an army, his servants, so and he had weapons, swords, shields, probably spears, bows and arrows. What did they go do? They took the enemy out, they saved his nephew and he battled multiple nations and won. Now, am I saying go and fight the world? No, someone tries to harm anyone I love, it's going to be a bad day, okay? It is what it is. I'm going to pray for you. Don't come through my door. An AR will meet you, right? Don't come through my door unannounced. I don't know you. So not only are we planning crisis financially, but also over our life as well. There's evil out there. And if you don't have the tools to protect yourself against evil, right? Hey, you're saved. Great. You go to heaven. But uh, could we have prevented that? Could we have, uh, you know, uh, bought us another 5, 10, 15, however many more years on this on this planet to continue to do God's will and expand his kingdom here on earth? Um, if we would have had protection, proper protection, right? Cameras, whatever it is that we need to give us the defense uh, to, to prep for crisis planning. That's physical crisis planning. That's, you know, surviving. Then there's the financial side. I'll just stick to the financial side for the most part. I recommend go watch the Navy SEALs out there, the ex-retired Marines. They give really good insight. Very, very good insight. Okay, Maya says, have you ever heard anything about the cybersecurity field? Yes, Maya. Huge, huge. Cybersecurity? Oh my God goodness. Do you know how many people have been getting their identities stolen in, in the last couple years? And how many um, hackers at the highest level have been hacking your Walmarts, your Targets, your banks, taking people's wealth, the crypto space, people getting hacked left and right, cybersecurity, insurance. You want to get in online sales? Become a content creator, you sell something like that, you sell something like that, you sell anything here. You sell cybersecurity online, cybersecurity insurance, the VPNs, you know, all the methods of protecting your six months worth of expenses, your credit, your debt tools, your, your bank accounts, your checkings and your savings, your passport, your driver's license, your social security, your everything, your home address, 
all your information, cybersecurity, legal protection, right? That's, that's a huge industry. So you could pivot into the sales part of it, or you can actually uh, work in it where you are the person that's helping people defend, protect their digital life. Think of all the content creators that put themselves out there on the internet, but still want privacy. They need to have this stuff to protect themselves, right? <clears throat> Big space right there. Let me see. Who did I miss? Freddie said real estate investor. That is something I'm getting into real estate. Let's see who else? Business owner. Andrew says looking for new offers and strategies. Oh, we definitely went over a lot this evening just now. Tatiana, I want to open a small retirement home. Oh yeah, we I didn't put it on here, but I know that's what we mentioned. Very good stuff. Powerful. So the, uh, the, the retirement home thing is, is interesting because that's a very unique way to create rental income through long-term care senior citizens senior citizens that need long-term care have long-term care insurance or have the money to pay for it don't want to be in a home you have a property you put them in the home 24-hour nurse so you got the 24-hour nurse that comes takes care of that person that needs 24-hour 24-7 support what an industry there i think i think it costs multiple thousands of dollars per month to take care of a senior citizen 24 7 between the cost of the nurse the cost of the stay, the home, and all the equipment, the bed, the special stuff that's all needed, retirement home. So what I would think in, in my mind is, and I'm thinking, how could I get into this with little to no money? So I'm thinking, okay, I need to learn about real estate transactions. Who's involved in, in all the transaction of real estate? And how do I plug myself into that transaction, into those different transactions? So retirement home, I need to find the property, right? Got to find the property. Ideally, I'm assuming I want to find a property that's in a maybe gated community, maybe has an HOA, right? But it's in a gated community or HOA or non-HOA or near a hospital, I would assume. It's just I could be totally wrong about what I'm saying. So I find a property that is for sale, um, or I could potentially knock on doors and see if the homeowner is selling. And then I could convert a four bedroom house and have two, three people in there. Or I can convert a fourplex where there are two twos or three twos or and have two people, two long-term care patients in each room. And oh God knows the thousands of dollars I could charge so that they could have the the nurse is there on site, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of paperwork, a lot of maybe some regulation going on in there, but I'm pretty sure the, the income would be very, very high in regards to what the home would be. And so I think learning about seller financing is, is attractive if you have low income. I mean, if you have low capital, not a whole lot of credit, access to capital or capital cash, if you lack both those things, but want to get into real estate. I think seller financing is something that I've been trying to learn about where you're able to acquire a property without putting the money down and you can essentially take over the existing mortgage of the seller and their interest rate. You assume their mortgage through the right paperwork and everything. And then that allows you to project potentially, you know, instead of having to qualify for an 8% loan today or 7%, maybe you take over somebody's three or four or 5% mortgage and a lower payment. And then you do what it is that you want to do here, convert the property into say Airbnb or short-term rental or retirement home, right? Let's say we stick to retirement homes. It's a multifamily, let's say multiple clients in each one. You get a deal with the hospital or you find clients, right? Cause you got to you have to find the client, don't know how to do that. I'm pretty sure we could figure it out. Then you find the clients, you charge your rates, covers the mortgage, cash flow positive, tons of tax benefits because now you own the real estate. A lot of things that can happen there. So we discussed quite a bit, quite a bit. And we're going to keep discussing it because I know there's going to be people that take no action. Always happens. But what I have learned is the more I say it, the more people take action. So my goal is numbers. If I can just simply reduce the amount of people within my community that go through crisis, the more successful we all will be. Those that do go into crisis, I wanna be able to put them in the community because what happens is when people go into crisis, they stop showing up to meetings. They stop being a part of the, the group. They start participating. They don't wanna engage. I do none of that because they're, you know, they feel shame and guilt. Whereas it should be the totally reverse where it's like, if I'm doing well and Al's doing hot and Freddie's doing great and Eric's doing great and Jerry's 
blowing up but let's say who was one of my nose earlier let's say let's say let's say vernita's not doing hot right that she was a no and ushani was a no so let's say they're not doing hot but we got 15 people that are doing phenomenal and what if we all came together and helped out two people so 15 people help two people out we all contribute a couple hundred bucks here you go get over that stay committed to the group keep coming keep showing up then they blow up and then two other people go through a crisis and those two come in and say no i got you because you got me last time and then it creates like a very very good another layer of protection that's the other thing that i'm creating for myself is a community of protection me personally i want to know cops i want to know firefighters i want to know doctors nurses i want to know first responders medical professionals I want to know military people. I want to know fishermen. I want to know people who own boats. I'm building a whole network for myself where I can just call people up. Hey, I need this. Can you help me out? Hey, I, um, uh, there's something wrong with my AR. Something wrong with my guns. I need help. I've been in the military for 20 years. I know how to use all these guns. Show me how to shoot this thing. All right, show me how to aim. Boom, I can go to you for that. Hey, nurse. Hey, doc. I'm feeling a pain right here. Something going on. I don't know what. I have access to people. Like I'm thinking 20 years down the road, the type of information type of help I'm gonna need. I work with so many moms, I'm gonna start leaning on you guys for advice. What does a good husband look like? You have a successful husband, you've raised successful children, give me some tips. What do I need to do to make sure fiance I have is, is good and soon to be wife? Like, how do I, you know, make sure her needs are, are met? What are some things, right? I don't know of that, I'm not even thinking of that you can address. So, well, you know, Denzel, she's gonna do that, 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 that. Here's what you need to do, here's what you need to do, here's what you need to do. That's why, I, that's why I've been, I've been very intentional. Like, yes, it's my purpose working with moms, but there's also some benefits that I'm getting out of this as well, is understanding how moms operate in general, that I can be a better father, husband, when the time comes, right? Now I got all these mothers that can help me out, and then all those mothers that are married, they got husbands, build a relationship with them, now I can talk to the husband, Hey, hey, what's up, bro? Um, I'm a young guy, uh, but you've been a father now for 30 plus years. What do you got? Lay it out for me. What's the strategy? How do I not lose it, right? How do I keep it all together, right? I don't want to have an episode. You tell me what you did wrong, that I don't repeat that same mistake. And now I'm getting family protection and advice, military protection, health protection. Then I got pastors and ministers and deacons that I work with that are either in this room or, or out of the room that cast the recording at the spiritual covering we are creating an entire community of services and needs that we all need from each other and then one day someday maybe we're all doing business with each other who knows i don't know all right i've been saying it for the longest like i'm trying to create an environment where more and more people eventually like talk share hey here's what i'm doing here's what i'm working on and and see what happens right because i'm just i'm very optimistic with all this stuff so i'm done pretty much done here went through i think i covered everything i didn't see, uh says rashid thanks again for sharing educating i have a heart stop so, okay so you had left we'll appreciate you yeah we're at 9 42 we can we can close out early i've really enjoyed this anybody got anything they want to add any questions we got our strategy okay six months worth of expenses please do not buy the dang bitcoin right now with your last 500 bucks please don't do it please don't buy that stock please don't invest in that guru just yet let's get our six months ready let's get our debt tool in line then when we have excess cash flow then yes go hire the guru take advantage of all the free stuff cool think big be logically conservative think big crisis equals opportunity we're gonna come out really really strong we're not gonna be looking crazy how to get into a call together question mark reach out to me directly i'll find out whether you're a personal client of mine if you're not a client of mine i do coaching and consulting for free if you're not able to afford it if you can afford it invest if you got your stuff in line invest if not let's let's build you up investing in coaching and working with me one-to-one -one is not an issue and we go the distance. Jerry says the ripple effect. Yes. Wow, says Tati. Beautiful, beautiful. Would anybody like to pray us out or we close out the evening? Anybody like to volunteer, pray us out? You can either raise your hand, the raise hand button, or just come off mute and say, that I'd like to volunteer and I will pass it to you. And I would like you to pray over the community that anyone that enters in crisis, that God gives us the, the wisdom to press forward, right? that he increases us even in the midst of crisis. Sometimes crisis needs to happen for us to get to the next level. We need to go through that challenge and that obstacle because God is, 
is building up certain muscles around us that we don't even know, that we didn't even know we had there. That was a muscle that we, we didn't even know we needed to work on. And God's building a particular muscle in you to get you ready for that next blessing or that next obstacle. When it does come, you're gonna be that much more prepared. Right?